Hi, everybody. So I know that you're logging on from all over the country. My name is Ben Porkalov. I work for the Keystone Elk Country Alliance. We are a nonprofit wildlife organization here in Pennsylvania, and we operate the Elk Country Visitor Center in Elk Country, Elk County, Pennsylvania. So um, I know some of you are logging in from Pennsylvania. I know there are other people in Nevada. I know there are other folks in other states. Um, thanks for joining me. I guarantee you're going to learn something new, even if you've already been here to the Elk Country Visitor Center. A couple things about our organization before I get started. I am the education coordinator. I've been here for almost three years. Uh, prior to that, I was a school teacher for 22 years. And uh, I love being here because I don't have to uh, do grades anymore. And I get to teach about all the things that I find most interesting, like wildlife and conservation. So I'm going to get started because we don't have a lot of time. Um, you're going to get to see a portion of our distance learning program. So if there's any teachers that are all logged on right now, you may be interested in getting this program for your class either later this year or next school year, totally free of charge thanks to our uh, generous donors. The cool thing about this is not only is it live, we can interact with the students, but also ahead of time we send out an elk trunk with a whole bunch of elk props in it, an elk antler, an elk pelt, an elk skull, among other things. And the students get to explore and put the, their hands on these items um, before or after our program. So I'm gonna get started, I'm gonna get into it here. You can see where we're located here in Pennsylvania, the star shows you in the part of Pennsylvania where we are at. And there is a wild elk herd here. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how that came to be. Um, elk were a native species here in Pennsylvania, but then they were extirpated from our state about 150 years ago. Here you see a map of Pennsylvania with all 67 counties, and you see where we are located right here in Elk County. We got the name Elk County because we were the last stronghold for the original Eastern Woodland Elk that used to live here. Um, if we were to travel back five, 600 years ago, there were over 100,000 elk living in Pennsylvania, and they could be found in all parts of our state. Then um, with overhunting and market hunting, uh, back then there were no hunting seasons or laws. That was the end of the Eastern wild or Eastern woodland elk. And um, therefore, about a time period of about 50 years, we didn't have any elk in Pennsylvania. Here you see our center, um, our Elk Country Visitor Center in Elk County. We usually have over 500,000 visitors come here each year to view wildlife. Of course, the elk, um, a lot of our visitors come here during September and October, which is when the elk are mating. It is called the rut and they are very um, vocal during this time period. And it's very exciting to see the elk during this time of year when they are going to be um, competing with one another for breeding rights. So here you can see we're moving towards the center. Uh, this building was built about 10 years ago. This is our 10 year anniversary for not only the center, but also the Keystone Elk Country Alliance. Our organization was formed uh, just prior to the build to the building of our Elk Country Visitor Center. The property here is 245 acres. It is owned by the state. It is owned by the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources in Pennsylvania, and we have a 35-year lease to manage and operate the center. As you can see in this part of Pennsylvania, there is a lot of wilderness. There are not a lot of buildings, there are not a lot of roads, and there are not a lot of people. And that is why the elk flourish in this part of the state. So here you can see elk distribution in the United States. Everywhere you see red on the US map here, there are elk found. Now, you can see that most of the elk in the United States are found in the western part of the United States. The uh, Highest population of elk is in Colorado. And you can see here we are in Pennsylvania. 
and our elk herd covers 10 counties. You can see some other places where there are elk east of the Mississippi. All of these have been reintroductions of elk. So like I said earlier, if we were to travel back 500 years ago, there were a lot of elk on the eastern part of the United States, but because of overhunting and habitat loss, the, those populations of eastern woodland elk, as well as um, some of the Midwestern states with the Rocky Mountain elk, uh, the elk no, no longer live there. Now, thanks to uh, the Pennsylvania Game Commission, as well, well as other wildlife groups in other states, they have reintroduced elk into those states. So these pockets like Arkansas, Missouri, Wisconsin, Kentucky, um, West Virginia, Virginia, these were all reintroductions of the elk herd. Pennsylvania was the first state to reintroduce elk into the state. We have now, well, I'm going to talk a little bit more about our population later. Let me talk about Kentucky just a bit, though. Kentucky has the most elk east of the Mississippi. Kentucky now has about 13,000 elk in their population. So here you see the six subspecies of elk that we had at one time. Now you can see that the Miriam elk that used to live in Arizona and the Eastern woodland elk that used to live in Pennsylvania uh, among other Eastern states are now extinct. I already mentioned it, it was because of overhunting and habitat loss. So you may be asking yourself, what type of elk do we have in Pennsylvania today? As, as well as Missouri and Kentucky and these other states that reintroduced elk. We all reintroduced Rocky Mountain elk. And the reason for that is because um, the animal biologists, the wildlife biologists had to determine what type of elk they thought would be best suited to our habitat and our climate here in Pennsylvania. And they decided that the Rocky Mountain elk would probably be the best fit. fit. So between 1913 and 1926, the Pennsylvania Game Commission um, brought 177 Rocky Mountain elk from the Western states of Colorado, Wyoming, and South Dakota to Pennsylvania, and they brought them here by train. So Pennsylvania was the first state in the East to reintroduce elk. Like I said, that was 177 elk, and we have not reintroduced any elk since uh, that time. So 1926 was the last time we reintroduced elk to Pennsylvania. So let's talk a little bit about the population of Rocky Mountain elk in Pennsylvania today. There's the train heading East with those 177 Rocky Mountain elk. So here you can see, um, once they got here, the Pennsylvania Game Commission, like I said, the state agency that is responsible for managing all the birds and mammals in our state. Um, they were established in 1895. One of their very first goals was to bring elk back to Pennsylvania because they were a native species. Once the elk got here by tra train, they were released um, by these horse-drawn wagons into parts of the state where they felt as though the elk um, may be able to survive. So they were looking at portions of the state where, like I said, uninhabited by a lot of people. Elk require a lot of space. Um, you know, white-tailed deer are very adaptable. You can have white-tailed deer thriving in the outskirts of a city. Elk, on the other hand, are not going to do very well living where there's a lot of people for a couple of reasons. First of all, their, their range, an elk's range is a large area. Uh, and a cow, which is a female elk, its home range is going to be 10 to, 10 to 12 square miles. And a bull, which is a male elk, is going to home, have a home range of about 25 square miles. So elk require a lot more space than white-tailed deer do. The other thing is elk are large animals. They eat a lot more than deer do. A large bull elk can eat up to 25 pounds of food a day. So you can imagine the problems 
that you may have with elk living in a populated area. If elk gets into someone's orchard or someone's farm field or onto a golf course, it's not going to, it's not going to um, end up well for the elk. There's a lot of elk and human conflict where there are people and elk living in the same area. So there you see the Pennsylvania elk range I, I mentioned earlier, 10 counties now. Um, at one time, we only had elk living in two counties after the reintroduction. The range is growing, especially to the east and to the north. You may ask why. So to the east and to the north of the Pennsylvania elk range, there's a lot of public ground. There's not a lot of people and that's what the elk need. So here you see the elk population and how it has grown since 2008. Before we talk about this, I'd like to mention to you that the elk population did not grow ever since the reintroduction of elk about 100 years ago. It had its ups and downs. Brainworm came into effect a few years and took its toll on the elk. Brainworm is just one of the illnesses or diseases that elk can acquire that um, would take their life. Other uh, diseases that elk can acquire would be brucellosis, tuberculosis, and chronic wasting disease. Chronic wasting disease is a real concern right now. Um, there hasn't been any cases of chronic wasting disease in our Pennsylvania elk herd. However, there have been deer within the elk range that have tested positive for this disease. So it's just a matter of time before we have an elk in our state that probably is going to acquire this disease. Um, so you see in 2008, our population was at 515. It has climbed all the way up to 1,100 in 2019. And just this past year, each year, the Pennsylvania Game Commission does do a population count and they're doing that now by aerial survey. Um, here you see that they were doing it with a helicopter. Uh, currently, they are using airplanes and they are flying at night with infrared thermal cameras. So that's pretty cool and it is very accurate. So last year when they did their population count here in our state, they came up with between 1,400 and 1,600 elk in our state. Now, I mentioned earlier that the Eastern Woodland Elk, which was the native species of elk to Pennsylvania, became extinct back about 150 years ago, back around 1880. So why would there be a hunting season on elk in Pennsylvania today? This is a question that a lot of students often ask. You know, if elk were hunted to extinction 150 years ago, why would the Pennsylvania Game Commission allow elk hunting in our state today? It's a very simple answer. There are no natural predators for elk in our state. Um, a few calves each year may be taken by black bears or coyotes, but other than that, there would be no natural predators in Pennsylvania that are going to kill adult elk. So we have a very highly regulated elk hunting season in Pennsylvania. It's been going on for about 20 years. Depending on the population count, they allot a certain number of elk tags um, for the general public of hunters to put in for as a drawing each year. This year in Pennsylvania, we had 164 um, elk tags and uh, uh, 35 or 36 of those were bull tags and the rest were cow tags. This year, you can see I was lucky enough to be one of these winners of an elk tag and I harvested a very nice bull elk. Um, we have world-class uh, elk in Pennsylvania. Our elk, elk herd is very, um, very healthy. It's growing at a good pace, which is why we have this elk hunting season. Yes, we want the population to grow, but we don't want it to grow too quickly. That leads to sickness, disease, um, overcrowded, and elk are going to die of starvation. So 
we need to keep this elk population in, in check. And they do that through the elk hunt. So elk are members of the deer family, also referred to as the cervidae family. So deer family, cervidae family, same group. Elk are not the largest members of the cervidae family. That belongs to the moose. We do not have moose here in Pennsylvania. So moose are the largest, then elk, then caribou or reindeer. Caribou and reindeer are actually the same animal. Caribou are wild and reindeer are domesticated. And then we have deer. Now we have many subspecies of each of these animals found throughout the United States. Here in Pennsylvania, we only have Rocky Mountain elk and white-tailed deer. Okay, so we're going to take a look at a Rocky Mountain elk calf, and I'm going to give you some more information about our Rocky Mountain elk, which is what we have here in Pennsylvania today. So here I have an elk calf, a mounted elk calf. And this is how big they are when they are born. At birth, they weigh about 35 pounds. Because of their large size, elk only have one young per spring. Usually they are born the first week of June and they have a 245 day gestation period. Okay, so you see the spots. Those are camouflage, helps them to blend in. An adaptation for survival. And these elk calves grow really quickly. Here you see a female Rocky Mountain elk, referred to as a cow. When they're fully grown, they are going to weigh between 400 and 600 pounds. And their life expectancy is anywhere from 12 to 16 years of age. Here you see a Rocky Mountain elk bull. Notice the large antlers. Yes, they do not have horns. A lot of people say that deer and elk have horns. They do not. Um, bison have horns. I happen to have one right here. This is a bison horn. A lot of differences between antlers and horns. This is a Rocky Mountain elk bull, male. Huge animals. They are going to weigh between 700 and 900 pounds when fully grown. So the elk mating season is between September and October. It's called the rut and it's very exciting. And I see I'm almost out of time. So I'm gonna show you some videos real quick of elk during the rut. It's a lot of fun. Check it out. And here's a really good uh, elk fight between two bulls during the mating season, fighting for dominance for breeding rights of the cows. Okay, so that ends our program. Um, like I said, uh, we are a nonprofit wildlife organization called the Keystone Elk Country Alliance. We operate um, the center here in Pennsylvania. We have 16 chapters in our state. If you're interested in becoming a member to support our Pennsylvania elk herd, please check out our website. Also, teachers, please, if you like this, this is just a small portion of our distance learning program that we offer free of charge. 
at, all across the state. I taught uh, 93 third graders on Monday in California. Um, and uh, we're, we're very busy. We have five elk trunks that are constantly going out. Please jump on our website, get a hold of me, give me a call, send me an email, and we can bring this experience, this educational opportunity to your classroom, to your civic group, to your Boy Scout, Girl Scout group, um, nursing homes. We've pr provided this for many groups all across the state as well as other states. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. If you ever come to Pennsylvania, come visit us at the Elk Country Visitor Center.